Are you experiencing poor Wi-Fi or no Wi-Fi connection in some places around the house or office? Are you tired of having to stay too close to the Wi-Fi source because if you go a little bit further away nothing works? Then look no further because I'm having the same problem and I'm on a mission to fix it. Basically I'm installing Wi-Fi for a project and the goal of course is to make sure there is Wi-Fi coverage for the entire building. But right now, as you can see, the situation is far from perfect because there are places with weak or no Wi-Fi coverage at all. And currently Wi-Fi is only functional in the green area. Now, there are different methods that I can use to extend the range of Wi-Fi and hopefully fix that situation. So in this video, and I'm guessing upcoming videos, I'm going to try out each and every one of those methods one at a time and see which one works best. I kind of have a feeling that this is going to be an interesting series of videos. So make sure you're subscribed for that. So in this video, I'm going to try to extend the Wi-Fi range by increasing the power, I mean the transmit power of that device, which happened to be an access point. But before I do, let's quickly talk about how a device like that generates wireless signals in the first place. In a wireless router or access point, there is a transmitter that is the initial component in the creation of the wireless signal. When the transmitter receives the data, it begins generating an AC signal. This AC signal determines the frequency of the transmission. For example, for a 2.4 GHz signal, the AC signal oscillates around 2.4 billion times per second. For a 5 GHz signal, the AC signal oscillates 5 billion times per second. This oscillation determines the frequency of the radio wave. In addition to generating a signal at a specific frequency, the transmitter is responsible for determining the original transmission amplitude, or what is more commonly referred to as the transmit power. The higher the amplitude of the wave, the more powerful the wave is and the farther it can travel. Usually most Wi-Fi vendors offer the option to adjust the transmit power settings of an access point. A typical access point radio will usually have transmit power capabilities of 1 milliwatt to 100 milliwatts, sometimes even up to 1000 milliwatts. Some Wi-Fi vendors instead of using milliwatts might use decibel milliwatts or dBm. Now many home wireless routers usually have simpler and more user-friendly settings for adjusting transmit power. For example, instead of using exact transmit power levels in milliwatts or dBm, they might use terms like high, medium, and low. Now the default transmit power here was 100 milliwatts, and with this setup when I walked around the building with a Wi-Fi analyzer in my hand, this was the signal strength of each of these places for the 2.4 GHz band. This tells me that the Wi-Fi signal is pretty much useless beyond this point, because anything weaker than minus 70 dBm is considered weak and not usable. For the 5 GHz band, of course, the situation was even worse, because higher frequency bands generally have lower range. Okay, now let's change the transmit power and set it to maximum, which in my case is 1000 milliwatts. In many countries, there are legal limits on maximum transmit power allowed for Wi-Fi devices. Increasing the transmit power beyond these limits can violate regulations and may cause in fines or other penalties. So you have to check with your local authorities to make sure you never exceed those limits because otherwise you can get yourself in trouble. Okay, I changed the transmit power from 100 milliwatts to 1000 milliwatts. And checking the signal strength again shows that it looks like what I did pretty much solved the problem immediately. I mean, for the most part, both radios are showing a signal stronger than minus 70 dBm in every place, which is exactly what I wanted. Well, that was easy. Too easy, actually. So does that mean we're good to go? Not really, because something weird happened. When I was here, even though I was receiving a rather strong signal and I could easily see the Wi-Fi network on my phone, no matter how many times I tried, I could not connect. Not even once. It felt as if the Wi-Fi was there and I could see it, but it actually wasn't. Okay, that brings us to probably one of the biggest disadvantages of just randomly increasing the transmit power. 
Let me explain. Wi-Fi is of course a two-way communication and for it to be successful, both directions should be working fine. What happened here was that I only increased the transmit power of the access point, essentially enhancing only one direction of this communication. As a result, the signals now reach the destination, but do not make it back to the access point, because the transmit power of the phone is much lower than that of the access point, preventing communication in the reverse direction. Now, one might think that increasing the transmit power of each of those client devices can now solve this problem. Unfortunately, that's not necessarily possible because battery-powered client devices such as smartphones or tablets usually have very limited transmit power, typically around 100 milliwatts or even less, because if they were to go any higher, it could significantly drain their batteries and even cause overheating issues, which is obviously not good. Alright, so the bottom line is, although it might be possible to increase the power way more than the default value, it doesn't necessarily effectively increase the Wi-Fi range for all the clients. And for that reason, I'm not going to use it here. And I should look for a different solution. And that's what we're going to do in the next videos. But until then, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.